Crossside Church, Friday, 7 o'clock service. How y'all feeling this evening? Come on, where are my West Siders at? Nanakuli to Wainai to Makaha. Amen? Well, I have the privilege of bringing God's word to you folks on this blessed evening. And I want to I wanna give a shout out to Pastor Kalai who um, entrusted me with giving you guys the word of God today. I know he will be back next week, I believe, Pastor Russell. Um, and so I just want to give him some, some props and what he's doing out here with you folks. Uh, you know, how about, a, how about a hand for Pastor Russell, you know, leading the charge here. Thank you, Pastor Russell, for having me out here, you and the Proside Church, Main Campus Ohana. You know, I'm, I'm so blessed to be out here at uh, church. You know, what, what Pastor Russell was sharing earlier, you know, what we're doing out on the, the west side is a fruit and it's the result, the outward expression of prayer. And it's through you guys, you guys standing in the gap for what we are doing out there because how many of us know we cannot do anything aside of prayer, right? Aside of prayer and aside of the Holy Spirit. And you guys make that possible for us to do what we do. But before I get into the message, I wanted to share a little bit about myself. I know for some of you folks who do not know me, my name is Moku Kukonu. I am happily married to my wife, Sierra Kukonu. I got a picture up here. She's also with me today. She is the first lady of ProSci Nanakuli. We've been together for the past, <laughs> how much? <laughs> We've been together for the past 12 years and married, happily married for the past eight years. Uh, together we have four beautiful children. Um, my oldest, Myla Jean, my second, Mayani, my third, Myliana, and finally, I did it, guys. <laughs> my son, Myzen Shine. Amen. That is my beautiful family, and we are the leaders and stewards of ProSci Nanakuli. Um, and I boldly stand here and claim that today because of God's call on my life, not just my life, but my wife's life. Not just her life, but my children's life. Because it's not just us going through it, it's my family. And my family is here today as a testament of what God can do, not just in my life, but in your life as well. Amen? I was just an ordinary, I'm still an ordinary person, Amen? And God can use ordinary people to do super ordinary things. Amen. You know, ProSide Nanakuli started with just three people. Just like ProSide Church in general. In a bank lobby. Right? ProSide Nanakuli started with three people who was committed to the mission and the vision of Jesus Christ and his church. Of commitment, of being in small group every week, consistently. Right, but having the heart to reach the people that they love. And that's the heart for everyone here, amen? That our church is called to go beyond the church walls, to go beyond our homes, into our communities, and share the love of God with those who do not know him, amen? Well, today we'll be diving into Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, where we see Jesus is recorded speaking to his disciples. He's having a one-on-one -on -one discipleship moment with them, right? And he's speaking to them, and he's really speaking about the purpose of his church to you and I. And we see here that he calls us to be both salt and light. He calls us, you and I, to be both salt and light, and how it makes all the difference in this broken and dark world. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, could you please open up with me to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Through 16. And it reads, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of God. Amen. Join me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. That it is the firm foundation that we stand upon. Lord, we soften our hearts and we open your mind, our minds to the truth that you have for us today. Father God, I pray that as your people have come here to have an encounter with you, Lord, that they will leave differently than they came. We pray for your transformative words 
to move within us, Lord, to move within us in such a way that we want to live our lives pleasing and honor to you, Lord God. And so we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people say amen, amen and amen. First point in your notes is we make a difference by being the salt of the earth. Verse 13 goes on. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot. Now we come here and we ask ourselves, what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? More so, what does it mean when Jesus tells us to be salt of the earth, right? And if you know the scholars say back in Jesus' time, right, as we all know, they didn't have refrigerators like we do, right? But scholars say that they used salt as a preservative for their meats, right? That was their refrigeration, right? And they used it to preserve their meat from rotting. And in the same way, Jesus is telling us Christ followers who are distributed around the earth, around the communities, around in our families, right, are to help preserve humanity from falling into godlessness, right? And he's putting two and two together and he says, and what I love about salt, right, is that it's, it's permanently changes the flavor of food. It permanently changes the flavor of food, right? The influence that you and, have, you and I have is the body of Christ that we can change the culture of this world because of Jesus who is in us. And the, the main point here is that the body of Christ serves a godly purpose in the world simply by living out and carrying out the word of God. Amen? Now we as the body of Christ stop serving that purpose when we stop living in faithfulness to God, right? Example, you know, I'm not a scientist or I'm not a, a salt harvester, but does anybody know what it takes to, to harvest salt? It's a process. It's a long, long process. A lengthy and laborious process. It requires patience, perseverance, and it, it requires us pulling through the hardest and difficult times. And in the same way, Jesus calls us to be the salt in this earth. And you know what happens when, when they go through this process, when you're harvesting salt, that it can be taken away by a simple storm. And I, I see that some of us here today, we've come and we've persevered and we went through discipleship. We did our one-to-ones. And, and when, when a storm comes, it shakes us. But Jesus is saying, we are all to be the salt of the earth. If you take a look at uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, in the Beatitudes, before this, Jesus says that the purpose of this context is when we stop being poor in spirit, living in repentance and, and not having meekness, having an appetite for Righteousness, we stop becoming, or unrighteousness, we stop becoming the church. We, we become unsalty. And you know, this can be catastrophic and unthinkable, right? When salt loses its flavor. When salt loses its, loses its flavor, you know. Do you know what happens when you don't use salt that has been stored in your cabinet for a long time? Anybody know what happens? It gets hard, right? You ever, you ever tried to use hardened salt? Nothing comes out of it. It's, it doesn't purely come out, right? And Jesus doesn't want us to be salt that is in our kitchen cabinets being forgotten. He wants us to be the salt of the earth, amen? And you know what? I realize that our hearts sometimes, when we go through trials, can be hardened. It can be hardened like the salt that has been left. In, the, in that kitchen cabinet. You know, the point here is that it's not about the loss of salvation, but it's about the loss of purpose, right? Bad salt isn't destroyed or burnt, but it's just simply ignored and it's thrown out and it's being trampled on. 
That's not what God has called us to do. As Jesus stated, salt that has lost its saltiness is no longer good for anything. How can we be the church? How can we be the ones that Jesus is calling if we're not being the salt of this earth? You know, that's why I love Proside Church because the fact that we have small groups. Small groups help us to keep us salty in a good way, right? Salty in a good way. <laughs> when we get around, when we start losing our saltiness, let me tell you what, when you get around salty people for the Lord, right, good salty people for the Lord, you start to bring back your saltiness. Amen. And I, I remember uh, a while back, a man I met a couple years ago, he had problems with drug and alcohol abuse. And as, as I was led to walk with him through discipleship, you know, just to be there for him, I felt God was calling me to speak life into him. You know, to speak life into the situations that he was going through. And, you know, as we was going through it, there was people who rallied around him, rallied around me to help me speak life into this person. And, you know, what I love about God is when he uses somebody else to, and, and us as the church to help someone who looks so far gone, right, that's how we are to become the salt. You know, now today... Years later, he's married, he has kids, and now is serving at ProSide Nanakuli. And I look at that today as because someone chose to speak life into him. Someone chose to, to be the salt in that person's life. And God gets all the glory, amen. See, you just don't know who you might impact. These folks who come now, this man who comes now have brought folks from his family, from his friends to be a part of what we're doing out there in Nanakuli. And I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed to see lives being transformed because that's what the church is called to do. The church is called to go into places where there's no salt, right? To go into places where Jesus is calling us to say, hey, we, we need you here. We need you here. And if you have a call to go into a community, into a place, I encourage you. That isn't from the devil. That's from God himself, amen? And Jesus is calling us, the church, to be the salt. You know, hearing this story might make us feel like this person, this man that I, I just was talking about, you know, he didn't deserve a chance. But we all do, right? We all do. We all deserve a chance. And, and you know, as we walk with people like this, you know, as we walk with people who, who are walking in darkness, who need help, Jesus helps us to get through it. Amen. Point two in your notes is we make a difference by being the light of the world. You are the light of, a wor of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and give light to everyone in the house. Now we ask ourselves, what does it mean to be the light of the world? Right? What does it mean when Jesus says, to be the light of the world. Well, back in Jesus' time, there wasn't no electricity. There was no electricity, right? And what they used was lamps, oil and lamps. And every night, it was very vital for the people in the house to place and position the lamps in a, in a certain area of their house so that everyone could see. And as believers, I truly believe Christ's followers, we are the lamps, Amen? We are the lamps, and where we are, where Jesus wants us to go, it's because he wants others to see him through us. Amen? And it's very vital of where we are, where we're placed. In fact, can I say this, that you're the only source of true spiritual light. Jesus has called you to be the light. Amen? Jesus has called you to be the light in someone's darkness today. And we see here that Jesus tells his disciples to not hide it or cover it up for any reason, for what good is the use of a lamp if it is hidden, right? And it reminds me of a, of a lighthouse, a purpose of the lighthouse. You know, the lighthouse is significant for uh, the people who are in the ocean, who's, who's in the boat, and 
If a storm comes, then they can see where they are. It's a landmark. They can be directed and navigated. And I believe that us as the church are a lighthouse. A lighthouse to navigate people who are in darkness. To bring the light so that people can see Christ through us. Amen. It's the same way with us in our walk. The body of Christ is the lighthouse, church. It is the lighthouse, helping people navigate through life's challenges and life's trials. You know, I, I want to share this. Uh, a year ago, my wife and I, we, we went through a challenging season where we became pregnant. And a few months later, uh, she ended up having a, we ended up having a miscarriage. And, you know, in, in that moment, I realized God was trying to work something in our hearts, in our hearts. And I remember this day, you know, we ended up going to the hospital and she was, she was bleeding profusely. Baby ended up coming out and the most scariest moment of my life is when the doctors took her immediately to have emergency surgery. And all I was thinking about was, Lord, you're taking, you took my baby and now you're about to take my, my wife. And I'm sitting in this waiting room and I'm sitting there and I'm pleading to him, Lord, you can't take her. You can't take her. What do you want me to do? What is it that you're trying to do in me? And he simply said, surrender her to me just as you did your baby. And, you know, church, to tell you the truth, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But I did. I got on my knees and I said, Lord, she is yours before she was ever mine. And if it's your will, I commit, I commit her to you. This is, she is yours. And, you know, in that same week, Sarah and I were asked to do four baptisms, four baptisms, and I believe it was five baby dedications. And while we were talking and praying, we were about to cancel it because of what we were going through. But God spoke to us and said, no, you guys are going to do it. You guys are going to do it. Later on in that week, we ended up going to the beach, baptizing those people. And I got a few pictures here. You know, we don't understand why God does things the way he does in our lives. Why he allows us to go through certain things. And, and for my wife, I was looking at her and, man, she's such a strong woman. While she was doing baby dedications, she was still mourning the loss of her own baby. And I looked at her and I said, man, that's what it means to be the light of the world. To be the light of someone, even if you're going through a difficult time in your life. You know, and it wasn't about us. I mean, we had our time of grieving and processing with the Lord, but... He was trying to show us something deeper than we could see. And as, you know, my wife and I journeyed, we realized that through the baptisms and baby dedications, more family, more friends started to come to Christ because of that moment. And I realized that's you and I, church. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to impact the people around us. But how are we going to respond to Jesus when he says to go? How are we going to respond to Jesus, especially when we're going through a rough time in our lives? And I say this, are we a church, are we a body of Christ that is built on a hill for everyone to see? Or do we want to keep it to ourselves and shelter ourselves when God tells us to go? You know, he wants us to use our testimonies and our messages to bring people to him. Amen. He wants us to use the things that we go through in our lives so that the light that Jesus placed in us is shown. 
Because it's not about us being glorified. It's not about us getting all the credit. It's God himself. Amen. So are we a church? Are we a body of Christ that is built on a hill or do we hide ourselves away? We are to be the church of Jesus who he has called us to be. Amen. In closing, your third point, God gets all the glory as we make a difference in the lives of others around us. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, everything we do, church, should ultimately glorify God. Everything we do in our lives should not point to ourselves, but it should point to God. You know, these good deeds and works that we do have already been predestined. It, have, it has already be, been predetermined. And, you know, the thought already has been by God, and he's, he loves us forever for it. Amen? He already plans the things of our lives before we even know what it is. And it's he who gets the credit. You know, making a difference, difference in the lives of others don't get us into heaven. But making the difference in the lives of others is the result of knowing that you're going to go to heaven. Right? Making the difference in the lives of others don't get us into heaven. But making a difference in the lives of others is the result of knowing that you're going to go to heaven. And it should compel us to want others and help others for the same things. Amen? Uh, I love how 1 Corinthians 12 says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. You know, and the way we do that, church, is through serving. Serving in church. Serving in our communities. You know, uh, with Prosa and Nanakuli, the, the blessed thing that I've gotten to see is the people of our community coming together and really having the heart to reach people of our community. You know, um, the people of community, we, we, we put some encouraging uh, events on where we get to reach people, we get to, you know, share the love of God with people, but let them know that the church is doing something, right? We're called to let people know that the church isn't just standing on the side waiting for things to happen, but we're, we're actually out there going and doing things, amen? And that what it, that's what it means to be the church. You know, we had a prayer walk around Nanakuli, I believe a couple of months ago, where all of us got to get together, and as we walked around, uh, it, we called it the Jericho Walk, because it went Haleakala and all the way around the schools, and we came all the way back down to Nanakuli Ave, and we did a circle walk where we got to pray with people of the neighborhoods, we got to pray with people who are outside watering their grass, right? People barbecuing in their yards. And the beautiful thing about it is we got to connect with them and let them know that the church is praying for them, that the church is right down the road if you guys want to go, right? How do people know if we're not telling people about us and about Jesus? It starts with us. It starts with us. I love how Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. You know, sometimes the opportunity arises when we least expect it. Just as I was sharing with Sierra and I of what we went through. You know, we, we didn't want to go through with it. We were, we felt that what we went through was a great excuse not to do what God was called us to do. But, you know, he calls us church. And when he tells us to go, our response is yes and amen. And sometimes it happens in the middle of our own trials, but God can still use that. The church is meant to persevere through things, through trials. And not just persevere alone, but with people Beside them, God has given you and I the gifts and talents to use to serve the people of our church, but also to go beyond our church and serve the people of our communities. I, 
I, I want to ask you guys, what platforms do you have today? It might be your jobs. It might be uh, your, on the campus. It might be in schools. Whatever it might be, God is calling you to use your platform, use your gifts to be the church that God has called you to be, to be the body of Christ that God has called you to be and share what God has done in your life to others. Amen. I have this question for you guys. Can we still serve others in the midst of our own life's problems? Can we still serve God even when we don't feel like it? See, there's a peace that you and I carry, church, as Christ followers in this world. That people see, just a glimpse of, and that they want, but don't know how to obtain that peace. You and I are the peace bringers. Amen. You and I bring that peace to the people who are walking in darkness. Amen. So I want to leave you with that. Can we still serve others in the midst of our own life's problems? And can we still serve God when we don't feel like it? Can we still be the church that God has called us to be? Amen. If you guys could all stand with me in reverence of God and prayer. Maybe some of you are here today and you feel like you're not worthy enough to be used by God. You don't have what it takes. Can I tell you that God is the one that qualifies you. God is the one that equips you and sends you. And that some people here have come with trials, have come with hardships and tribulations that they're walking through in life. And they say, how can I be the church when I'm dealing with this? You want me to go, but I feel stuck. If that's you today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will send his Holy Spirit upon you. Because it's, it's not by might, church. It's not by power. But it's the Spirit of God, says the Lord Almighty. So all I want you to do is raise your hearts to God. And he sees and he knows. And if that's you, I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you are a God who loves his children who knows what's best for his children. We thank you, Lord, that you equipped us with what we need as the church to go. That it's not by our own might, but it's by your power. Lord, I pray right now that your power will fill your people up today. Will fill your people up in such a way that they will feel confident in you, Lord. Father, I pray that they will use their platforms on whatever you have given them, their gifts and talents. I pray, Father, that you're revealing to them right now, Father, on how to use it, on how to reach people, on how to be the church by using their platform, Lord. I pray, Father, boldness will come upon your people today. I pray that they will be like a city that is built on a hill that cannot be hidden. I pray that all the good deeds that they do, all the works that they do will be for you and for your glory, Lord God. Father God, we thank you so much for what you are going to do as we are obedient to you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name.